Welcome to Brands Hatch for round six in the Norcross Thunder Saloon Championship. The sun may be shining at the moment, but I can tell you that during practice this morning, the drivers found the circuit very slippery indeed, so we should be in for some entertaining racing. Keeping you up to date with the pit action here at Brands Hatch will be Colin Howard. My name is Bill Mantovani, and Steve Keynes is here with me to take you through the current points table in this Norcross Thunder Saloon series. The current point situation after five rounds is as follows. In Class A, Rod Burley and Dave Brody in a Sierra with 26 points lead the class. Second is Holman Blackburn and Nick Oatway in a Manta 400 on 23 points. Third in Class A is John Cleland and Vince Woodman on 16 points. In Class B, at the top of the table is Hugh Chalmers in the Manta 400 with 19 points. Second on 14 points is Steve King and Tony Paxman. In third place, with nine points, is John Chambers and Gary Cole. So everything's still to go for, with plenty of points available here today. Well, before we bring you the grid lineup, let's just go over to the pits where Colin Howard has been having a word with one or two of the drivers. Well, I have with me this afternoon one of the abiding legends of motorsport, Tony Lanfranchi. Tony, how many years have you been doing this now? Far too many, far too many, Colin. Around about 30, 33, 32. And in that time, how many championship wins? Oh, I don't know. I, somebody told me we won 17 championships now. I'm not too sure. Well, there is a fantastic record. And I believe also more race wins than anybody else around here at Brands Hatch. Well, yeah, but I've been doing more races than anybody else. You've still got to get up there to finish first. Tony, tell us something about your team. Uh, we've got a Ford Anglia with a Warrior 16-valve 2-litre engine. It's not the quickest of motorcars. In Class B, of course. I've got Hugh Marshall with me, who's my team driver. Uh, we're, we are sponsored by Meadowcroft, which is a charter surveyors in London. Um, the, car, the car's getting better, let's put it like that. I don't think we're going to have another win today with it. Another win, but it would be fun. So. Were you aware of your Freudian sit there, describing it as a Ford Anglia? No, I wasn't. It's Ford Escort, isn't it? <laughs> Something like that. Well, you see, that's age. That's what age does to you. Well, welcome, Tony. We'll look forward with interest to see how you get on today. I hope you have a good run. Thank you very much, Colin. Thank you. Well, I have with me now Steve King, who's driving the very smart Escort number 52, backed by Ollie Service. Steve, you've not been doing this sport too long, I believe. No, that's right, Colin. I uh, started on the circuits in October 1986. There's been a very short uh, few months, really. But very successful. Yes, we haven't started off too badly at all. I'm quite impressed and quite pleased with the way the car's handling. It's uh, very reliable, which is what it's all about, really. And you're backed in this venture, as we can see from your very startling overalls, by Olivetti. Yes, that's correct. Uh, they came in purely because of the Thunder Saloons. And it does help because I do work for them. But uh, they seem to enjoy being involved with the motorsport. And we have their clients that come down. We do some entertaining for them. Very good, but it looks to, to, as if you have to work for Olivetti to get sponsorship. Yes, it does help. I am a managing director of one of their subsidiary companies, which is involved with the Oli service side of the Olivetti company. Uh, so maybe it does help, yes. Well, I hope it helps you today in your race, Steve. Wish you all the very best and will enjoy watching you. Good, thank you very much, Colin. Well, here in the center of action, right in the pits, we're talking to Dave Brody. Dave, it's a very special day for you today, I believe. Yes, certainly is. It's 25 years and four days since I did my first motor race. It doesn't feel that long ago, but it certainly is. Well, it doesn't look that long ago either, Dave. Looking at you, you look, still look a very young man. But you've got lap records at places which don't even operate now. Yeah, I've got the lap record forever at Crystal Palace. Soon car lap record there. And earlier this year, I got the lap record at Silverstone as well. And I think I've had probably as many lap records on this particular circuit, Brands Hatch, on the, both the Grand Prix and Short Circuit as anybody. And I remember at one time, I broke the lap record on the short circuit in the early 70s, maybe five or six times in the early part of one season there. So, so I've had my fair share of lap records, yeah. A spectacular result. Um, what about your car today, Dave? How's it going for today? Well, the I'm driving two cars. I'm starting the race in the Starium, which um, will probably be its last race with me. And um, we're hoping we'll get a decent result so that we can advertise and sell it. And then I'll be, at about 20, 25 laps, I'll be jumping into Rod Burley's Cosa Sierra which I put on the front row today in second slot, but this one's on fifth slot. And it'll go quite well. I and mean, unfortunately, we completely miscalculated the gearing on the, on the Starion, and it's about a second a lap slower than it should be. But, you know, race times are never as quick as practice time, so there's a good chance we'll be up with the leaders for a few laps. Hope so. And maybe if it's not revving quite so hard, it'll last longer. 
Well, there's always that part about it, yeah. I mean, you know, we do work, this particular circuit works the engines very, very hard. I mean, it also works your arms quite hard as well. And you usually find that guys around about 30 laps are sort of not only running out of power, but they're running on, out of arms as well. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll be watching you, Dave, to see whether you run out of arms or power and which happens first. Thank you very much. Have a good day. My right, I have with me on this fearsome beast, Tony Trimmer, ex-Formula One driver, Formula Three champion, Monaco winner. Tony, tell us quickly about it, please. This car is uh, uh, 15 years old. Um, we're still pedalling it around quite quickly. It's a wonderful car. I've got a 5.7 litre Chevy engine. Uh, we're second on the grid today, which is upsetting me, so um, we're fiddling with the suspension. And you're also today driving in the Thunder Saloon car with Dave Brody. Yes, this just came out of the wind this morning, and uh, I had a few laps in the car in the official practice and quite enjoyed it. It takes some getting used to after driving this. Well, you're no stranger, of course, to any type of motor car, are you, Tony? No, we've driven Le Mans cars, a uh, little bit of saloon cars, very little bit, though, mainly single-seaters throughout my career. But I do know, of course, that you often teach the youngsters nowadays uh, coming up here at Brands Hatch. I've been doing that now for 10-plus oh, years, I think, and um, it's, it's just because I'm so local, and it's, uh, it, it's good for them, it's quite good for me to keep my hand in as well. Not only so local, but a definite star of the sport, and we're very pleased to have you today in Thunder Saloons, and we'll also watch you with interest in this fearsome beast. Thank I you, I look Tony. forward to it. Thank you. Well, as we watch the cars now setting off for the first of two pace laps, you can see there that on the front row of the grid is that marvellously prepared number 11 car. That's the car of Vince Woodman and John Cleland. The Vauxhall Carlton, and in fact, I'm told that Vince Woodman is the man in the driving seat at the moment. Don't forget that the drivers have to come in at some stage during the race and change over to the second driver. Two, two drivers usually are going to be taking these cars around. You see there the Stars and Stripes car of Holman Blackburn and Nick Oatway. There was the number one car. This car we are looking at now, number 70. That uh, is driven by Lawrence Jacobson and Hugh Chalmers, and they are the ones that currently lead the Class B. So a very, very good practice session for number 70. He's actually starting from the fourth row of the grid, and alongside him will be the man who's currently in sixth position in Class B, though he should be a lot higher than that. He's some way behind, but he's also already got one class win to his credit. That is Trevor Shaw, and he is co-driven by John Edwards, and that is number 112, and it's a Ford Escort. That's the one to look out for. But there is the man leading Class B, number 70, the car driven by Lawrence Jacobson. Anyway, to take you through there, on the front row of the grid, as they go through, completing the first lap, it's uh, Vince Woodman in the Vauxhall Carlton. With him is number four, who you just saw there, and that is the Sierra, driven by Rod Burley. Rod will be taking the first stint, and Dave Brody will be out there when the car comes in for the driver change. Second row of the grid, the car that we saw earlier, number 18, that's the Stars and Stripes car, the Opel Manta 400. It's a 5.7-litre engine inside this car. It starts from the second row of the grid, and it's Holman Blackburn who will be starting Nick Oatway getting into the car later. That car, in fact, set the third fastest time during practice. Uh, John Cleland was fastest on 47.8 seconds. Brody was second, 48.2, just four tenths of a second slower. And Holman Blackburn in car number 18, 48.4 seconds. Alongside him will be car number 22. That is the Honda Legend, an excellently prepared car. Really worthwhile having a look at this car if we can catch it when it comes in for its pit stop. Number 22, that is being driven by Jim Mensley, and 22 will be lining up alongside the number 18 car. Third row of the grid, Dave Brody. In number 12, the Mitsubishi Colt Starion. And with him will be the ex-Formula One driver, Tony Trimmer. They are coming round to complete their second pace lap. The flag falls and the cars are away on this first of 50 laps. And as they dive there into Paddock Bend for the first of these 50 laps, it's certainly a flying start there. And it's the Mobile One Vauxhall Carlton car in the lead there from the Nico Way car. And you see there number 22 coming through, that's Jim Mensley. Now Mensley in the Honda, that car was smoking slightly 
during practice this morning but the team believe it was only a small oil leak uh, they appear to have cured it let's just see what happens there is number 18 Holman Blackburn being chased by number one Vince Woodman there's the number 12 car driven by Dave Brody number four Rod Burley out in the Sierra they come through a very quick lap that one as leading as they go over the start finish line Holman Blackburn leads Vince Woodman and a really terrific battle between these two because at the moment uh, Woodman is lying third in the series seven points behind number 18 Nick Otway now Otway and Blackburn have two wins to their credit one third and two non-starts so that's not bad for second place in the championship overall in class A and this race already taking on a familiar look to it with these two cars out in the front again as we've seen time and time again in this series and let's hope on these first opening laps that the drivers remember we've got a 50 lap race here it's not a 10 lap sprint let's hope they're keeping something in reserve and they're going to go the distance well there was a bit of smoke there we saw from car 22 so it's still got that smoke haze following it and it looks more of a smoke haze more like uh, a lot of oil coming out of that than just a slight haze, Steve. Yes, yeah, speaking to the guys working on this car in the interval, they were saying it's nothing dramatic. It is, in fact, leaking oil from somewhere around the rocker cover, and the oil's getting down onto the hot exhaust, making it look worse than it is. The only problem might be if it hasn't got the oil capacity, and, in fact, if that oil leak did get any worse, we may see problems later on. That's very true, because it is burning quite a bit of oil, as you can see there. These cars, though, do carry quite a lot, but they're not all dry sumped, I believe there are still some wet sumped engines uh, out there on the track which surprises me there's number one the car driven by Pete Stevens at the moment and Pete Stevens has not got his regular driver with him Neil Facey Neil is qualifying today for the world championships in stock car racing so alongside Pete Stevens we shall see Chuck Nicholson the ex Tom Walkinshaw racing driver but an excellent dies here at the head of the pack with these two familiar sparring partners and I'm sure each one trying to weigh up the other waiting to see if there's going to be any mistakes early on yes with three and a half laps gone in the lead it's number 18 Holman Blackburn in the Opal then number 11 Vince Woodman in the Vauxhall Carlton so Vauxhall first and second somebody there is stuck yes, in the sand Tom Bell there Tom Bell in this area Cosworth he's gone off at clearways he's in the sand it looks as though he might be there for some time you can see how well that sand stops the cars as they go off it does at least prevent them from crashing out into the barriers but of course once you're out you could well be stuck in there for an awful long time the door is open Tom Bell there looking to see what he can do as the other cars go through now that is at the top of Druids I believe and there is the leader Holman Blackburn going through chased by Vince Woodman in that fabulous Carlton now if we can just uh, pick up the Carlton number 11 for a moment we can see this is the car that uh, went fastest during practice we're looking at the moment's car number 22. There is number one, Pete Stevens. And as we look at the leaders just going through there, there's quite a battle. Look at that coming through there, number 12, Dave Brody in the Sterion. And uh, he's been chased extremely hard by Pete Stevens and up into i believe he's up into third place if i'm not mistaken is yes, uh, that's, uh, that's quite brody dave brody there tremendous amount of experience of course dave brody been saloon car racing for many many years uh, goes back right back to the escort the run baby run escort days and i'm sure if anybody can manage to catch these two leading cars then this is the man Yes, well, there's still quite a bit of smoke coming out of 22 Jim Mensley there and Mensley chasing extremely hard. I don't know how long Dave Brody will be able to hold that third place for. There go the leaders, still in the same. One, two formation and trying to go down the outside is Mensley. And he does it. That's terrific burst of power, Steve. Yeah, super drive there. Lovely. Going down into braking for Paddock. Just nips through. And also a battle there between the leaders as Woodman tried to go down the outside. We watch Jim Mensley, number 22. And Woodman, Woodman didn't make it, so I think at the moment the battle is starting to heat up at the front. 
Well, we're coming down to the back of the pits here, where Rod Burley has managed to get in from the back. We're not quite sure what's happened to him. He's obviously got some gear selection problems. He's got no gear stick. Paul, if you can see his gear stick there, the mechanics are desperately trying to give him some gear selection. So, so that's the problem with the championship leader, Rod Burley. No gears. Uh, that would in fact explain why he, he's having uh, problems. We'll see where he is. Now, in fact, I'm very surprised to hear that because I was being told a tale this morning that that's exactly the same thing as happened uh, the last meeting here at Brands. He brought the car into the pits, it was late in the race, they managed to jam it into a gear by using a hammer and a punch, and then he went out and completed the, uh, the race distance, just jammed into one gear. So I'm very surprised to hear that's exactly the same problem as at the last meeting. That's right, well, I believe that's exactly what they're trying to do at the moment the car is in the pits. Meanwhile, a real battle is developing at the front there. We've got three cars in there. There is Holman Blackburn, followed by Vince Woodman, and right inside there with them is the smoking uh, Honda of Jim Mensley. And trying to go through on the inside, Vince Woodman. Vince Woodman, as they go over the start-finish line, who's got the power? Well, Woodman. Woodman it was. He put on a tremendous burst of speed there as he went over the line and in fact Holborn has dropped back. Holborn Blackburn has now been demoted to third place as Mensley also took the Honda legend through into that second position. So from first, Holman Blackburn in the Opal Manta is down to third. Yes, in fact Holman Blackburn there was pushed slightly offline going into Paddock which allowed Vince Woodman through and Pete Stevens of course seeing the gap there decided to nip through in the same spot. Well, a terrific tussle up at the front, but this is the man who currently lies third in the championship. They've had one win, have Cleland and Woodman, in this particular car. They've had one win, one third place, and unfortunately, two disqualifications. One for driving too fast out of the pit lane, and one, I believe, for uh, the noise. During the noise check, the noise level from the exhaust, in fact, exceeded the limit. Yes, that was the Donington round. The car comfortably won the race. It was co-driven by Derek Bell, the sports car driver. But unfortunately, after the race, it was excluded for exceeding the noise limits. Well, I begin to wonder now, Steve, whether number 18, the Stars and Stripes car, has a problem because Holman Blackburn was third fastest during qualifying, 48.4 seconds. That was four tenths of a second. Uh, six tenths of a second, rather, uh, behind the... Fastest man in practice, Woodman, so um, I would be behind Cleland, so I wonder if he has a problem, in fact. Yes, yeah, difficult to know at this stage whether he has got a small problem, which is slowing him down, or whether it's probably dawned that, hang on a minute, fellas, this race is over 50 laps. Let's just cool it a little bit and see what happens. Quite right. And, in fact, they've just overtaken one or two of the back markers, and there is another one. So, Woodman, number 11 going through second place 22 and Blackburn has closed up slightly there on Jim Mensley. Now I wonder if Mensley's car is burning all that oil off or whether it's actually throwing up any oil onto the screen of Blackburn's Opal. Yes, I was just wondering that. I was just wondering if, if maybe Holman Blackburn had backed off to get out of that smoke haze. Now sooner had a thought that, that in fact he closed up the gap again and he seems quite happy to be very close to the Honda. Well, maybe it's a case that on the corners it doesn't get splattered so much onto the screen. Let's see what happens down the straight. Woodman leads as they start another lap and closing is Holman Blackburn on Jim Mensley. Jim Mensley in the car number 22. That's the Honda Legend, six and a half litres engine inside that. And uh, Jim's usual co-driver, Robin Donovan, was hoping to compete today, but he's over at Le Mans. And, in fact, Blackburn going through on the inside. Yes, lovely move there. He had the line going into Druids, kept the inside line. In fact, there was nowhere for Pete Stevens to go. He had to let him through on that occasion. Yes, he, he really sized that one up, didn't he, uh, yes, Blackburn? Yes, that's true. I think, actually, he started that manoeuvre going into Paddock Bend. Well, he's, he lost it up there, and now he's regained it. So, Holman Blackburn back into second place. It hasn't come up on the scoreboard in front of us at the moment, but Vince Woodman leads, number 11, second place, Holman Blackburn in the Opal Manta. Also in the pits, and looking like retirement is number 36. Can I, I presume you're retiring at this stage? Yeah. What's happened? Oh, the clutch has gone on there. 
clutch is yeah the clutch is gone it, it just lost drive no drive to number 36 very bad luck and i haven't seen car number four back on the circuit yet the rod burley car that broke the gear stick so i wonder if they've managed to repair it we'll have to wait and see Now, the car that we are looking at at the moment, that Stars and Stripes Opal Manta of uh, Otway and Blackburn, that car won the last Thunder Saloons race we had here at Brands Hatch just two weeks ago. So, altogether, they've notched up two wins, one third, and as I said before, two non-starts, so that is an excellent performance to be up there just three points behind Burley and Brodie, the Class A leaders. And, of course, plenty of points at stake today, all to go for in this 50-lap race. Well, we are at the half distance point in the championship. So these drivers now have really got to go for it to prevent uh, the point situation stretching out up at the top of the table. And we're looking there at the cars who go through that uh, look like number one going through. We'll try and pick them up for you. In fact, number one, the uh, Pete Stevens, Chuck Nicholson car is down in fifth place. So the order with 37 laps to go in the lead. It's number 11, John Vince Woodman in the Vauxhall Carlton. Second place, number 18, Holman Blackburn in the Opal Manta. In third spot at the moment, 22, Jim Mensley in the Honda Legend. And fourth position, number 12, Dave Brody in the Colts to Ryan. So a good selection of cars there, except, of course, for the two uh, Vauxhalls up at the front and in fact there is Rod Burley he's just been passed there by the leading car so he has managed to get in a gear of some sort and he is out on the track yes that's the number four at the back of these uh, four cars number four Rod Burley co-driven by Dave Brody the Sierra pretty quick during practice I'm looking through for his practice times in fact Dave Brody was uh, second fastest and look at the way that, oh, that uh, Blackburn is driving. I think he's decided that uh, he's really got to uh, go some. Forget the fact that it's a 50-lap race and they've still got 36 laps to go now. I think that uh, Blackburn has decided he wants to win this from the front. Yes, and of course, if the gap is a similar gap to the one that we're seeing now, then this race could, in fact, be won by that pit stop. We'll look at the way that the car number four there is going, the Rod Burley Dave Brody car. That really is going... Quite well, there he is, the number four, the blue and white Sierra. That car was second fastest in qualifying. Dave Brody driving 48.2 seconds. So it's good to see they've managed to sort out the gear lever and uh, get it back on the track, but it's got an awful lot of ground to make up. Yes, I'd be surprised if he has got a full selection of gears. He was very slow coming out of Druids, which would suggest to me that probably he has got it jammed in, in a fairly high gear and one which doesn't allow him to put the power down coming out of the slow corners. But let's just see how Rod manages to carry on. Well, we've had 15 laps at this stage as they come through and complete another one. That makes 16 laps. So therefore, we should now shortly start seeing some of the pit stops. They're allowed to come in and change drivers between lap 16 and lap 32. So very soon we'll be having some pit stops. We'll be keeping an eye open for the cars as they come in. And of course, Colin Howard is in the pits, ready to pick the cars up as they come through. And we're watching still the man in second place, number 18, Holman Blackburn going smoothly. This is the car that won the very first time out last year at Snetterton. They effectively unpacked the car, unloaded it from the transporter, went out onto the circuit and promptly won the first time out in last year's Thunder Saloon series. The leader still number 11, Vince Woodman, shortly to go in and allow John Cleland, the man who was fastest in practice, to go out and have his turn. Oh, and getting very tight there as they come through. No, number 11 there. That's the leader, but it's number 27 I was looking for. And uh, we had some discussion about this car because it... Uh, and as we look at the leader, Blackburn has closed right up. And I think that was where um, number 11 was held up by 27. Yes, I think it was probably held up just a shade by that marker. And that allowed Holman Blackburn to catch up, and he's right with him now, Bill. He's right in, coming into the paddock there. Yes, well, 27 is being driven by Robert Bridger, 
and in fact it's a Toyota Starlet two litre turbocharged car and to give you some idea of how fast these leaders are going there is Woodman number 27 car is actually in uh, eight in seventh position at the moment yes when we say that the uh, the class b car there was holding up the leaders that's no detrimental comment at all these class b cars they have got a race of their own and it's just one of the facts of the life that the faster cars have to cope with that every few laps they're going to have to try and lap the slower cars right and looking down the leaderboard at the moment number 112 trevor shaw in the escort is currently in sixth place and he's the head of number 70 lawrence jacobson so in fact the battle is really hotted up in uh, class b because the man in sixth place and who desperately wants to make up some more ground he's already they had one class win to his credit trevor shaw co-driven by john edwards in the escort currently lying in front uh, of number 70 the Vauxhall of lawrence jacobson and hugh chalmers and Holman Blackburn, as he exits Druids there, he's getting a bit of oversteer, a power slide on. He did exactly the same exiting Paddock Hill Bend, which shows the uh, determination that he's got. It shows the commitment. Even over a 50-lap race, he's prepared to treat it as a sprint. And there is the leader, number 11. We saw somebody there drifting very wide, just as you spoke, uh, Steve. And uh, I noticed somebody there being lapped for the second time. I believe that was uh, one of the escorts just looking down through the entry list. Yes, that was escort number 90, that's Paul Harmer in there. And somebody is in the pits there, that's the car of Dave Brody. And it, are they having a driver change? Because it certainly looks as if there is nobody in there. We're back with the leader and Woodman still circulating in the Vauxhall, followed by number 18, Holman Blackburn. These two cars, really, they just seesaw up and down. First they close, then pull out a little bit of a gap, but they're still in there in first and second places. Completing another lap, it's still in uh, third position, Jim Bensley in that uh, Honda Legend. And I was looking inside the engine compartment of the Honda Legend, and that car, Steve, the engine is seated very, very low in the front, isn't it? Yes, it's been dropped down, oh, it must be six or seven inches from its normal right position. In fact, it hardly looks to be skirting the ground at all. It certainly wouldn't like to be ridden over the kerbs, have an idea. Yes, and the engine is also mounted uh, quite some way back. The rules are fairly free in the Thunder Saloon series. You are allowed to do whatever modifications you want to the engines. In fact, you can even put a totally different engine in, I believe. So uh, there's quite a choice. There is the man that we're talking about, number 22. It's the Honda Legend, six and a half litres, and it's Jim Mensley, and normally it's Robin Donovan who's out there with Jim, but Donovan was hoping to drive at Le Mans this weekend, so Jeff Farmer is deputising. It's a brand new car for 1988. The Honda has, in fact, suffered a few teething troubles. Uh, when we saw it out for the first time, it had that smoke haze, and it sort of kept it throughout all the uh, five, six rounds but it's now uh, at last battling for the lead in this particular round here at Brands Hatch today. It's sponsored by Blue Hawk Home Improvements and I think they'll be really pleased to see that car up there in third place at the moment, but of course that order could change once we have all the pit stops completed. Yes, in fact they're working very hard on the development of this car. Um, they were saying in the interval this morning that they're actually having to try and develop the car during the racing season. They're not finding the time to take it testing, and of course that does make life very difficult. But they were pleased to say that they have got over earlier transmission problems, and they were fairly confident that the car should go the distance today. Yes, we saw a brief glimpse of the uh, Brian Poles, Poles Don Manley car out there, number 21, that was in the pits before. So uh, Don Manley now in the driving seat we're with the man in second place that's holman blackburn he'll be handing over to nick oakway shortly we'll keep an eye open for you for when the leaders come into the pits at the moment they're still out there circulating there are 27 laps to go in this 50 lap race so at the front it's still number 11 vince woodman in a comfortable lead now if you can call this a comfortable lead he seems to be holding station and let's hope that this race in fact is one on the wet racetrack it would be a pity to see the pit stops marring this gap which we see at the moment let's hope that at least the cars do win the race on the track yes well the leader there number 11 
the car it's of course backed by the mighty GM dealer sport and it's a really terrific car superbly prepared and it was specially built for the series it's in its second year at the moment and so far it really has been a troublesome one as I said earlier it's had one win one third and two disqualifications one for being too noisy and one for the uh, the drivers exiting the pit lane a little bit too fast they had a uh, problem in changing drivers the seat belts weren't undone they lost some time and the driver went out just a little bit too fast and of course that brought the wrath of the marshals down upon them flames flaring out from the exhaust as they keep the engine going this is lap 25 So at the moment, with the leader in the pits and doing a driver change, John Clellan taking over, we have now in the lead number 18, Holman Blackburn. I wonder how long he's going to stay out there uh, before handing over to Nick Oatway. What would you be your feelings, uh, Chris? You've been a driver out there on the circuit. What would, would you be thinking at the moment? I think it'd be fairly selfish, actually, Bill. I would stay out there as long as I possibly could, enjoying the race. In actual fact, they have to come in by lap 32. But well, Yes, sorry, Steve, that's the man in second place now. Number 22, with the leader having gone in. Holman Blackburn leads in number 18. Second, number 22, the car of Jim Mensley. And in third place, number one, Pete Stevens. So that is the order. Opel Manta leading. In second place, the Honda Legend. A push start away for the Brodie Burley car. Only one gear in the gearbox, I suspect. With that broken gear change, they're probably making it all in one gear. So, Holman Blackburn here, comfortably circulating at the moment, probably trying to build up a little lead. We might see him dive into the pits late if he comes along a group of slower cars to lap, but I think until that time, he seems to be hanging on there, he's quite happy driving around this circuit. Well, I should think, Steve, that he'll be trying to pull out as much of a lead as possible. I haven't seen... Oh, yes, in fact, on the scoreboard now, we have confirmation that uh, John Cleland, who took over from Vince Woodman, is in fourth spot at the moment. So the early leader, number 11, the Vauxhall Carlton, now driven by John Cleland, is down in fourth place. But, of course, first, second and third place man have yet to pit. We look at uh, number 22 back, overtaking some of the back markers. 52 is Steve King. Stephen King in the Escort BDG 2.2 litre. Now Mensley currently lying in second place, overtaking one other of the back markers coming through. Let's pick up uh, the cars at the end. We're waiting to see where number one is and number 11 there, in fact, is number 11. The man in fourth place, previously driven by Vince Woodman, number 11, Vauxhall Carlton. Now it's John Cleland in the driving seat. We've got someone else in the pits. Let's go over to Colin. It's got a problem, and once again, we've got the duty scrutineer checking it out. Whatever it was, the mechanics have solved it very quickly indeed. Waiting for the bonnet pins to be done up. And he's away. And as we watch number 11, Vince Woodman, going round, the news is that number 18, the Stars and Stripes car of uh, Holman Blackburn, has gone into the pits for its driver change, so it's all change at the front. And here we have driver change for the Oatway Blackburn car, number 18. Holman Blackburn's out in a flash. Nick Oatway's straight in, trying to get the belts done up. Five seconds so far, checking the tyres. He's got the belt done up and he's away in about 15 seconds. Number 18. We just saw number 18, Nick Oatway, charging back into the race. Now, how far down will he have dropped? The scoreboard says he's in eight, he's in fourth spot. There is
is the man who currently is in fourth place. He's had a stint at the lead. It's Nick Oatway in the car now. Let's see what Oatway can do about making up some of that ground. Still in the lead, it's number 22. But I believe he has yet to make his pit stop in second place, according to the board. It's John Cleland. And in fact, as I speak, John Cleland moves up into the lead because number 22, Jim Mendley, has come into the pit to hand over to Jeff Farmer. And as Jeff Farmer getting in on one side, well, Jim Menzi helps him with the straps on the other side and gets out on the other side. A bit of advice there. I can see Jim talking to him. It's a very, very quick change. And then away. Yes, and in a burst of noise there, Jeff Farmer suddenly rushed, rushed out of the... Uh, pit lane their driver change was extremely quick so the honda legend is back in the action and really not too far down someone has gone off i believe somebody has gone off at the top of druids but well, jim that was an extremely quick change can you tell me what uh, jeff's coping with out there yeah jeff's i've uh, handed a bit of a problem over to jeff we've been losing oil steadily right through the race and uh, certainly the last few laps i've had the oil pressure's been dropping off in a couple of places around the circuit if we take a really low gear round Druids, round the hairpin, it's holding a lot of oil in the engine and we're losing pressure. So what I've had to say to Jeff, just take it easy, keep your revs down, just try and get in there and hold it together for the finish. Well, you've done very well so far. Good luck to the end. Thanks very much. Thanks. And there's still number 22, Jim Mensley, in that fourth position. There is number 18, still in third place at this point, Nick Oakway. A former rallycross driver, he's been out on the circuits now for a number of years. Uh, Nick, in fact, has tried a number of different sports, uh, not all on uh, four wheels. He's even been down the Cresta Run with the four-man bobsleigh team, the British team, a few years ago. He's completed it on the skis and he's also completed it on his helmet when the bob turned over. The team captain, of course, once they got to the end of the run, turned everything the right way up ordered everybody back to the top of the hill and they promptly did it all over again but this time the right way up yeah, it's a tremendous sense of fun as uh, Nico Way will give anything a go and that car number 70 is the one that's lying in second place in the class at the moment uh, Hugh Chalmers, Lawrence Jacobson, number 70, the Opel Manta 400, the yellow car that you see it's sixth overall in the race with 20 laps to go but it's actually lying at the moment in second place in Class B behind number 112, which of course is the John Edwards Trevor Shaw Escort. And if we can uh, stay with this car at the moment, uh, the, the uh, Opel Manta, we've seen it frequently ventures down from Scotland. It's come all the way down to contest the series. It's run particularly well in the wet. So it went quite well in the last race at Brands Hatch, which was uh, pretty wet by all standards. However, today the circuit is quite dry, but very, very slippery. The drivers were uh, saying that in just two weeks, the last round was two weeks ago here at Brands Hatch, in just two weeks the circuit surface has changed considerably. And uh, the Stars and Stripes car there of Nick Oatway, he's currently in third position coming through up to Druids, they go around Druids Bend, down Graham Hill, through Graham Hill Bend, they are of course using the short circuit here today at Brands Hatch, it's still number 11 in the lead, John Cleland in the big Mobile One backed uh, Vauxhall Carlton, and we'll try and work out now exactly how far ahead the leader is. There he is, number 11, he's just going into Druids, and we watch Oatway just coming through Clark Corner, so you can... It's about half a lap, isn't it, Steve? Yes, that's right. Quite a substantial lead at the moment, but I'm just looking for the second-place man, number one. That's Chuck Nicholson in the Vauxhall Senator. And coming through up into Druids yet again. The man in second place. Everybody getting close. Somebody's spinning out there. Let's just pick him up. One of the Vauxhalls, I believe, spinning out. And there's the man in fourth position, 22, Jeff Farmer. Jim Mendley started off, they were on the second row of the grid. And now Jeff Farmer is driving number 16, you see there is the Mike Wilson, Alan Craggs car going through. Number 70. 
the uh, new China's car going quite well over the start finish line another lap completed 16 laps to go this race seems to be getting quicker and quicker but the leaders now spreading out we are looking at the moment and yes number one has pitted so Pete Stevens has gone into the pits and the man now in second place is the Stars and Stripes uh, Opal Manta of uh, Nick Oatway and Holman Blackburn there he is, the man currently in second place, but he's a half a lap behind the leader by our reckoning. Still number 11, John Cleland out there in the lead in the Vauxhall Carlton, 5.8 litre Chevy engine. So, Nick Oatway now, with it all to do this afternoon, he could do to find himself as much excitement as going down the crest to run the right way up this afternoon. He's got a half lap deficit to make up now on the leading car. Well, I'm, as he crosses the line to start another lap, I'm looking for the leader around the circuit, and the leader, in fact, nowhere to be seen, so he must be out of our sight down below. And, in fact, yes, the leader just going around Clark Corner now, so if we can switch to the leader, we'll see exactly what the difference is in their driving styles that is allowing the leader, number 11, John Cleland, the big Mobile One-backed Vauxhall Carlton, to pull out this tremendous advantage, half a lap really is quite a lot. These cars seem to be so evenly matched in the early stages. Burley, Dave Brody. We'll see if we can pick the leader up for you. He should be coming over the start finish line in a few moments. In fact, he's just coming around Clark Corner any moment now. The leader comes through, completing a number lap. There he is, just going through our picture. As we look at this. Dice, number 21 there, the Ford Sierra of uh, Brian Powell's. There is the leader going through now. Let's just keep an eye on him. He's right behind number four. There's the leader amongst that gaggle of cars, the car with the stripe. And somebody there is smoking. 21 is the one who's smoking. Brian Powell's and Don Manley, the Mercury V8. Looks like a Sierra to me, uh, Steve. Yes, in fact, we've been calling that car a Sierra all day. It is, in fact, the American derivative of the Sierra, which is called the Mercury XR4 Ti. I noticed just now that you stopped a car going out which had a flat tyre. Yes, that's right. Would he have gone out if you hadn't stopped yes. him? Yes. That's the duty of the due performers, the duty scrutineer. That's right, yes, yes. What would we do without you? That's right. <laughs> And we're watching now the leader, John Cleland, as he comes through. He's got 11 laps to go, and he really is lapping this Brands Hatch Indy circuit with monotonous regularity. Going through well as we watch the cars now all spread out. A real variety of cars out there on the circuit, Steve, all shapes and sizes. Where is the leader? Should be coming through. There he is as he comes through, and now he's pulling some 6,500 revs i believe yes six and a half thousand revs in fourth gear along that start finish straight about 135 miles an hour and in fact the brief now for john cleland with 11 laps remaining from this 50 lap race the brief for john cleland now is to try and maintain the substantial lead that he's got there's no need to go any quicker he mustn't lap any quicker now he has now got to concentrate on holding the car together and nursing it to the finish line well, he certainly doesn't seem to be nursing it at the moment because he's holding that advantage over number 18. So with 10 laps to go, or at least it will be 10 laps in a moment, as Cleland comes over the start-finish line, the order with some 10 laps to go. First, it's number 11, John Cleland in the Vauxhall Carlton. Second place, some half a lap down, number 18. That is Nick Oatway. In third place, number 22, the... Honda legend of Jeff Farmer, co-driven by Jim Bentley. It started on the second row of the grid in fourth position. It's Chuck Nicholson now, now out there 
in car number one, the car he shares on a one-off drive today with Pete Stevens. That's the Vauxhall Senator, the V8 car. And in fifth position, number 112, the first of the Group V cars, 112, John Edwards in the Escort, co-driven by Trevor Shaw and completing the top six, number 70, the Opel Manta that we saw earlier of Hugh Chalmers and Lawrence Jacobson. So there is the man in second place. Let's see if we can follow him round for a lap and we'll sort of uh, tell you how the driver will be working away in there and uh, what sort of angles he has to take in setting the car up as he goes around the corner. And who else to do that for you but of course Steve. So here we are, it's the start of the start finish. Straight, he accelerates out of flat curve into fourth gear, into fifth gear, approaching 140 miles an hour now as he breaks down into fourth gear, turns right into Paddock Hill Bend, down the hill where the helmet is compressed into your shoulders with the G-force, up towards Druids. It's the slowest corner on the circuit, second gear, 55 miles an hour, accelerate out of Druids, down the hill now, up to third gear, into fourth gear. It's 110 miles an hour along here, this short Cooper straight, before they turn into the left-hander of Surtees, quickly followed by McLaren. This is third gear, 75 miles an hour. Quite a difficult corner, nearly a double apex corner here. And as he turns into this right-hander here now, he accelerates into third, fourth gear, and to fifth gear, and we're back round a complete lap there. And I'm sure he was pulling uh, quite a few revs, or what he's doing at the moment as he goes over to start another lap. A bit of a twitch there, Steve. Yes, I've noticed once or twice the tail is just giving him a bit of a reminder what's happening at the back of the car. Is that under braking, do you think? It looked to be then, yes. It looked to be as he braked. Of course, he's braking fairly hard from 140 miles an hour to turn into Paddock Hill Bend, and of course, he drops from fifth to fourth gear. It may just be as he drops the clutch in fourth gear. Right, well, it's number 22 still in uh, that third position. There he is, car number 22, just coming through into your picture now. There he is, and where is the leader? We are looking to pick up the leader and see where he is. There he is. So just look at the way that the leader, John Cleland, has virtually overtaken everybody except the second and third man with some six laps to go. So in 44 laps, John Cleland in the, Vo in the Vauxhall Carlton, that big 5.8-litre Chevy-engined Carlton, has overtaken everybody up to the third place, or rather, he is currently chasing to overtake the man in third place, 22, Jeff Farmer. And quite extraordinary, the dominance of this car now, when you consider in the early stages, the first few laps, the first three cars were very evenly matched, but in fact now complete dominance by this car. Well, we'll look at the gap down to the second place man, there is number four, sorry, number... Yes, number four going through, Pete Stevens. He's just gone through. We're waiting for the other cars to come, and I think it's going to be an awful long gap. That was number one, Chuck Nicholson, the ex Walkinshaw driver there. And where is the Stars and Stripes? There he is, coming into our picture just on cue. So that is the man in second place. Where is the third place man? You will be able to recognize him because of the smoke coming from the back of the car. It's number 22, the Honda legend at the moment being driven there by Jeff Farmer. There he is. And you can virtually see the sump of that engine poking out from underneath the car. It really is very, very low. It's difficult to explain how low the engine sits and how far back the engine sits in that Honda Legend. There is the leader coming through up into Druids. This Mobile One-backed Vauxhall Carlton, Vince Woodman. He is only a couple of laps away from victory. It says three laps to go, so there's, there's two laps plus the one he's on in order to complete this 50-lap uh, race in the Norcross London Saloon Championship. They're at the halfway point at the moment, and Cleland and Woodman are lying in third position on 16 points, 10 points behind the leader in the GM Dealer Sport Vauxhall Carlton. And can I remind the viewers that this stage, that this championship, the Norcross Thunder Saloons Championship, is actually all about the manufacturers and the sponsors and not the drivers. So it's the car that leads the championship, not the driver itself. So in the lead, it's the best promotions car of Rod Burley, 
and Dave Brody. That is the Cosworth Sierra number four. We saw it earlier in our picture. Second place, the Stars and Stripes car, the man's racing Opal Manta of uh, Nick Otway and Holman Blackburn. That is in second place on the road here today at Brands Hatch. And there is the man who is in third place, the, D the GM Diva Sport Vauxhall Carlton of uh, Cleland and Woodman going through, about to complete another lap, and somebody spun 67. That is Brian Chatfield, Dave Lawrence, BMW M12. A really strange-looking car, this one, Steve. Yes, it is. A tremendous piece being grafted onto the boot there. I've just actually had the stopwatch on the gap between the first two cars, and it's 28 seconds. That means that it's with the cars lapping in practice at something like 47, 48 seconds, it's very nearly three quarters of a lap. Well, it says one lap to go on the scoreboard at the moment. Number 11 leads from 18 second, 22 third. It's been that order for at least half of the race once the driver changes were completed and the leader steadily extended his lead. And I think he really is going to walk away with this one. It, all right. And there is the leader, the chequered flag is out. And so, excellent victory there for Vince Woodman and John Cleland in number 11, the Vauxhall Carlton. Where is the second place man? We look at the leader going through on his slowing down lap. Where is the second place man? It should be number 18, the Stars and Stripes car. There he is. Taking second place, it's Nick Ogway in the Stars and Stripes Opal Manta 400, co-driven by Holman Blackburn. And third position, it should be number 22, the Honda legend of Jeff Farmer and Jim Mensley. So a terrific victory there for number 11, John Cleland. It was uh, Cleland that set the fastest time during qualifying to put that car on pole position. Then Vince Woodman took the first stint at driving, and really he was the one that set the pace. He had to drop down to second place momentarily, then he was through into the lead. They timed their pit stop absolutely to the second. Vince Woodman, he led, he took it into the pits, he got out, John Cleland stepped into the car and to prove how well he went in qualifying, Cleland simply went out and walked away from this man, number 18, Nick Oatway. And as we see Cleland there waving to the crowd, just to confirm the final top three in this sixth round of the Norcross Thunder Saloons Championship. First, number 11, the car co-driven by John Cleland and Vince Woodman. That was the Vauxhall Carlton. A tremendous victory, almost runaway victory there in the closing stages of the race. Second place, car number 18, the Opel Manta 400, driven by Nick Otway and Holman Blackburn. And in third place, despite the smoke, number 22, the Honda legend, driven by Jim Mensley and Jeff Farmer. Well, we expected some tremendous racing and we certainly got it. Anyway, for the last word, let's go over to Colin in the pits. Well, John Hopkins here, director of Norcross, for whom we must thank for the Norcross Thunder Saloon Championship. At the end of another very successful Brands Hatch round, John, you're going to take us round, I believe, in this lovely 1914 Silver Goose. I think so. Yes, it's, I think it's the fifth round. It, the, round the championship gets better and better. And uh, I thought for the fifth round, we couldn't bring a better car than my friend Alec Tanner's Rolls. So we'll take you around here. Not quite as fast as some of the vehicles, but it's been going a long time, and it'll still be going. And a certain style. Thank you, John. <laughs> well, John, you're proudly wearing the winner's garland, having won today's Norcross Thunder Saloon round. Where does that leave you in the championship? Well, we're still third overall, but an awful lot closer on points now. The, uh, with us finishing first, that brings us up very close to second place, who's Rod Burley. And overall, we'll now be the Manta because Burley didn't finish today. Well, it gets closer and tougher at the top. We look forward to seeing you again at the Norcross Thunder Saloon round at next time. Thank you.